Hello, wonderful people. Welcome back to my channel, The Teacher's Best Friend. This is Mary Lou Areño. So thank you for stopping by to watch my video. For today's episode, I am going to present to you part three of classroom management hacks. And this is the last of the series on how to be the teacher they make movie about. So after this episode, I am expecting you wonderful teachers to be the superstar teachers that they make movie about. Are you ready? Let's begin. Let's continue with hack number seven. This is reassess how you assess. So as teachers, we all know that we always use traditional assessment like you know, using paper and pencil, writing essay, multiple choice and all that. But it's about time for us wonderful teachers to reassess how we assess. Test scores and measures of achievement tell you where a student is, but they don't really tell you where a student could be. That is according to Carol Dweck, an educator and an author. So test scores and measures of achievement are important. We can, we can see where the student is, but do we know or do we uh, predict where the student end because of those uh, traditional assessments? So one of the biggest hurdles for students to get over initially is the idea that being wrong is bad. That is why you will see a lot of students, they're developing anxiety when they are in the classroom because they do not want to make mistake. Because for them, uh, making a mistake is wrong or it is bad. So we need to uh, remove that notion to our students. We need to encourage them to believe that no one is perfect and there is a big room for improvement. We need to make them realize that education is fun. It's not a punishment. How do we implement act number seven? There are steps to follow. Step number one, the one I mentioned, we need to consider self-assessment. We don't really give them tests every day or quiz every day just to know how they are doing. There are so many ways to assess our students. And uh, one way is to give them performance assessment, like, you know, in the form of debate, in a form of uh, group presentation. And after that, you have to allow your students to assess their own performance. Or you can also do peer assessment, like one team can assess the other team and vice versa. Or the whole team can assess their group. How do you do that? you need to provide rubric. And with that rubric, they will come out with uh, the final assessment of how they did in the project that you provided to them. So it's not always the teachers giving grade and checking their test papers. There are so many ways to do assessment of our students, okay? So step number two, let your student know it's okay to be wrong. As I have mentioned, no one is perfect and there is always a big room for improvement. It's okay to be wrong and then learn how to correct those mistakes and move on. Step number three, ensure consistency, which means like if you implement some self-assessment strategy, you need to sit down and evaluate with your students how are they doing, how are they, uh, how, how are they with using the rubric, how are they in, in doing self-assessment and all that. And you have to brainstorm with your students to improve your strategies on assessment. So this is not just your responsibility. Your student needs to have an input. So there should be a consistency and discussion on self-assessment with your students. And the last step is you need to commit fully. If you started on something, 
like you started doing rubric, you started doing self-assessment or group assessment, you don't stop after a week or so. You need to continue to do it and improve on um, developing different kinds of rubrics for your students, okay? So consistency and commitment is the key word. Let's move to hack number eight, email early and email often. So with this time of technology advancement, email is an ordinary thing for households and families. I know there are still some places and they don't have email, but there's still solution for that, okay? So the value of positive communication. According to Mother Teresa, kind words can be short and easy to speak, but their echoes are truly endless. So we need to remember that as teachers, positive communication is very important. So whenever talking about a student, like for example, you are in a parent uh, teacher conference or even just an informal conversation with your principal, with uh, the parent, let's say you came across in, in the supermarket or wherever, try to incorporate at least one positive comment sometime during your conversation. Focus on positive. So if you think that there is an issue with the student and you would like to communicate with the parent, it is important to start with something positive that will set the tone of a rapport and good communication between teacher and parent. Okay? How do we implement that? Email early and email often. Step one. Send an email to your students the week before school starts and introduce yourself. So in some schools, students are given their personal email using the school uh, org or something like that, or they have their own personal email and contact information. So send an email to your student the week before you, your school starts. Introduce yourself that you are going to be their um, class advisor or their a teacher for this school year. Say something about you and, of course, um, saying hello and um, talking to your students through email or letter will kind of break the ice. The students will feel like they are important because their teachers are communicating with them. And that will lessen their nervousness or anxiety in coming on the first day of school. So what about if the student or the family does not have an email? Well, another solution to that is you make a letter, write a letter, a hard copy, and mail it to the family so that you can communicate and introduce yourself before the school starts. Okay? Step number two. Send an email to parents and provide a little background about yourself. So it's not just communicating with students or uh, with your um, students uh, at the beginning of the school year. Talking to your parents or sending an email or letter to your parents is also important. And why is it so? Because sometimes parents, you know, they are also evaluating the teacher of their student. But if you introduce yourself ahead of them, uh, tell something about your career, how did you start, you know, those background and experiences. And this is also the best time to ask the parents at least, you know, five special um, Thing about their student, like their favorite food, their favorite color, so that in this manner, you get to know your students as well. So another question, what if they don't have an email? So there is always another alternative, which is to write a letter, okay? Step number three, create a running log of the kind of that students do. So every day, every week, as a teacher, you need to be observant of your students in the classroom and note 
all those good things that your students are doing? And why is it important to have this uh, log or documentation? Because when you start uh, communicating with your parents or even with your students, you can tell something good about them. You can be very specific that I caught you doing um, good. I saw you helping your classmate carry her books because they're so heavy, things like that. You need to be very specific on those kind acts that your students are doing and communicate it to them or tell it to them. Give them feedback. And also, you can write a letter or call their parents to say what their students did in the school. So create a log of kind acts. Try to catch your students doing good in school instead of you know, just watching them when to commit mistake and, you know, get mad at them and all that. So focus on the good things. Step number four, keep the parents and principal in the loop. So whatever is happening in your classroom, uh, the progress of your students, the project that's going on, the activity for the week or for the month, it is very important to have communication with your parents and of course update your principal so that um, he knows what's happening in your classroom because the principals they have a lot of classrooms to visit and sometimes they miss uh, the opportunity of seeing all those good things that's happening inside your classroom so you can also send an email to your principal saying for this week my students will have an experiment on this and then we're going to do outdoor activities, things like that. So inform your parents and inform your principal. Okay, so step number five, send an end of the year email asking about student growth. So sometimes we as teachers, we send report card, we send grades, and then um, we wanted the parents to be happy with numerical grades or letter grades that we send to their uh, home about their students. But sometimes it is very important for the parents to know and to be asked how their students grow through the years. You know, like um, what are the progress that you observe from Johnny? You know, did you, did you notice that at the beginning of the year, she was struggling to write a paragraph? Have you noticed how he improved on his writing? Things like that, you know. You have to focus on the student growth and ask the parents if they observed those progress, okay? So let's move to hack number nine. Keep bumps high fives and shout outs. That sounds fun, isn't it? So if you remember uh, seeing those videos on Facebook or on YouTube about teachers doing peace bumps, high fives and shout outs to their students when they enter their classroom. So that is this hack is all about, hack number nine. So a high five can be given out of even the smallest cake. And it is quick, cheap, and effective way to keep students in a positive mindset during class. So if you practice waiting for your students by the door before they enter, you can give them a little high five or a fist bump, depending on their mood, you know, if they want to make high five or fist bump or even elbow to elbow. So those are positive ways of starting your class. Be at the door and greet your students. Give them high five. Give them smile. Give them fist bump and all those, okay? So what can you do? First, as I mentioned, greet your students at the door meet them, smile at them. Sometimes students, they prefer, you know, a little shake hands, but some students, they like fist bump or high five. Greet them at the door and give them those high five and fist bumps. 
and try a warm up activity when you are in the classroom. You don't just jump into your lesson right away. Okay, open your books on page five. Let's do this. You have to try to create warm up activities to serve as introduction or icebreaker before you even proceed with your main lesson, okay? And don't forget to look for small victories during class. Like for example, Johnny uh, made a very good drawing in your uh, lesson about community, how you see your community and uh, Johnny did a very good drawing of it. So you can celebrate about those small success. You can shout out on Johnny's name and tell the class that uh, this is Johnny's work and everybody will appreciate. So look for small victories in your class. And customize handshake. I don't know if you watch that video I, and I love it. It's a male teacher. And um, while the students are entering the classroom, he did a lot of movement or action instead of just uh, giving handshake to each student. You know, those students that are fond of dancing, he danced with them before they enter the classroom. Those students who like uh, jumping or, uh, you know, like those basketball uh, players, students, they want to jump so you can jump with them and give high five on the air. So things like that personalized or customized handshake. Sometimes they even do, you know, uh, elbow to elbow, fist bump, or even um, like sh shake hands on the air or fist bump on the air or things like that. So there's so many different ways to customize handshake and all those greetings to our students, okay? So let's move to hack number 10, celebration, and games and field trips. Oh my, those are fun, okay? And never, never underestimate the importance of having fun in the classroom. Sometimes teachers, they don't want to create noise or commotion inside the classroom. They always wanted to see their students sitting quietly, hands on the desk. That's not fun. Nobody wanted to just sit quietly and do nothing on their seat. Let the students have fun, okay? So classroom management is about a lot more than implementing rules. Yes, there should be rules in the classroom, otherwise it's going to be chaos. But it is also about understanding your students. When you create activities, you have to tailor it to individual differences, to their interests, okay? Whatever makes learning fun, that is the one that you need to find out. And sometimes in some classrooms, there is a huge diversity, not only in culture, but also in, um, in background, family, and even uh, some kids, they came from, different countries of origin. So you have to know their interests. You have to understand their differences in order to tailor fit uh, the activities to their um, personality and even to their background, okay? So how are we going to implement it? So step number one, look for ways to add fun into what you are already doing. So it means, you don't have to reinvent the wheels. You don't have to recreate everything. So whatever you're doing in the classroom, the usual routine that you have every day, just continue doing that, but don't forget to add some fun. Try to integrate some fun activities in your daily lessons. So what are those fun activities? Let's say you are talking about uh, cleanliness, or safety in your class. Well, you can show a short video clip from YouTube that can be cartoons or something like that that could interest your student. So those are fun. And instead of saying, okay, these are the rules that we need to follow for health and safety, you can even dramatize. 
you can even ask the student to role play those safety rules. So those are some fun that you can add in your lesson. So do not reinvent the wheel, just add some fun. Step number two, incorporate new activities to your class. So don't be the teacher that is so predictable that students know what is going to happen in the class for this day because it's like same O, same O every day. You need to incorporate new activities in your daily lesson so that students every day they'll get excited to enter into your class just to find out what are we going to do today in Mrs. Jones' class, you know, because every day is a new thing. Every day is a new activity. But if you keep on giving your students the same old strategies, the same old activities without changing it, that is not going to be fun for them, okay? Step three, I have mentioned you always look for some victories. So if you find those little victories, you can have a mini celebration. Let's say for this week, the students really did well in their debate uh, presentation. So on Friday, you can tell your students, okay, let's have some movie and popcorn time, probably after your recess, things like that. You don't think like you are wasting time when you do those things. You just need to incorporate a little fun in your daily routine because learning is not always sitting and reading and using books and listening to the teachers. That is going to be not fun with the students. And they will say, it's boring, teacher. So we don't want to hear those words from our students, okay? Their favorite word, boring. So let's avoid that, all right? So step number four, plan field trips and bring in guest speakers. As a teacher, your students, they see you every day talking in front of the class, lecturing, giving lesson, activities and all. So it is cool once in a while to invite speakers. Speakers like, you know, parents that are professionals. Let's say you are talking about uh, health or uh, you're talking about in science about, you know, uh, how uh, the reproductive system or things like that about um, human body or human um, organs and all that. You can invite a parent who is a doctor and uh, give lecture to those kind of topics. So in that way, each, uh, your students will get excited. It's not always you who is teaching them. So invite speakers, even invite your uh, the teacher beside you, you know, if it is their free time and you wanted them to, you know, share something with your students and, and you can do that also with their class. So when we say guest speakers, it's not always someone that you need to pay. You can invite parents, you can invite colleagues, you can invite community helpers like firefighters, uh, nurses, doctors, police officers, and all of that. And plan some field trips, you know, short field trips to your community uh, park, you know, short field trip to your community museum. You don't have to go further. Just plan something within your community. And at the end of the year, of course, you can plan for something big to go places and ride a big, uh, the big school bus and so on. And step number five, include downtown in the mix of your lesson or in the mix of your uh, everyday planning. Why is it important? You know, kids, they need a break as well, like adults does. When you say downtown, it doesn't mean like you're just going to kill time and sit down and stare blank on the window or the ceiling. Downtown mix means, you know, give time to your student to just pick a book, sit down, or go to the corner 
and listen to your uh, you know favorite uh, song for a minute things like that or you can grab a headset and go to the computer and watch your uh, favorite cartoon for two minutes things like that downtown time and um, those serve as rewards also to your students and when your principal asks, what are you doing in your classroom? Well, if you make a lesson plan and you try to note in your lesson plan that I had some downtown activities, but that doesn't mean I am killing time. I am giving my students an, a freedom to choose something that they can do and at the same time they are learning and make sure I have a full supervision with my students. So you just need to make a note in your lesson plan so that when your supervisor or your principals will come and visit your class and he will see or she will see that your students are everywhere just you know, sitting in the corner or reading books or wearing the headset and all that. Those are all with purpose, okay? You do things with purpose. And you have to communicate that to your students, you know, class after our activities on this, I will give you five minutes downtime. It means um, if, if you uh, do well in this project, you can select an activity that you can do for five minutes that makes you feel relaxed or have fun, okay? So there should be a bound down in the mix or they call it down time or chill time okay so those are the hacks that you can do and if you implement all those hacks your students would have fun and will be happy to be in your class every day and you will be the superstar teachers that they make you be okay cool oh. It's a super thank you to all of you for listening to my episode. And this is the end of the classroom management hacks on how to be the teacher they make movie about. So next time I am going to present to you topics on special education and um, accommodation. So watch for that. I am also going to invite speakers. For now, if you haven't liked and subscribed, please do it. And if you have questions, please write your comments down below. So bye for now. To God be the glory. Thank you for watching.